everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about IB Physics. I was going to do this last year, but since the exams got cancelled, I thought, like, what's the point? But now the exams are resuming, I'm planning on making a bunch of videos about, like, studying for exams and all that crap. But in this video, we are going to just do, like, a fun top 10 tips for IB Physics, basically. I got a 7 in IBHL Physics. Yeah, so for all of my papers, I, like, just scraped the surface of a 7, but then for my IA, I got full marks. Those are my qualifications, and take with it what you may. Before I entered the IB Physics program, I had like literally never even done a class on physics. I just found it really interesting based off like a few YouTube videos I watched, that's why I chose it. I originally wanted to go into physics for university, but then because Minerva is kind of weird, I'm not going to do that anymore. I might do like physics in the future, but at the moment I'm thinking about majoring in data science and statistics. Physics was definitely one of my most favorite classes in IB. I thought it was so interesting. Definitely one of my favorite classes. Okay, that's enough rambling. Let's move on into the tips, which is what y'all are here for, right? How to get that sexy seven. Okay, so my first tip is that it's actually okay if you're not that good at math. You can still take physics if you're not that good at math. The math that we use in IB physics is like really general. There's no calculus involved. Like they simplify pretty much a lot of things. Like the math is like more mostly like ratios, reading graphs, doing graph kind of stuff, the algebra, it's pretty simple. Basically all of the math that we do, you can pick up over time. You also don't have to do HL math to take HL physics. I didn't do HL math, I did math SL. You don't have to have had done Kumon since you were like a toddler in order to do HL physics. The math is not that hard as long as you focus on trying to pick up your math skills along the way, if that makes sense. I could not do like multiplication tables on if i'm gonna be honest like i learned it throughout because you just kind of had to just eventually i was like i was getting annoyed because i like it was like eight times seven <laughs> was that but so eventually like, i got some flashcards and tried to learn it myself everyone in my class except for me was taking math hl and they were all like boys mainly korean kids who had taken kumon since they were like young and i was the only person who got seven so it's okay if you're not that great at math i'm not super speedy at math and it worked out for me. <laughs> Not trying to brag here, that's just what happened. Okay, my second tip is a bit of a weird one. Uh, when you're doing physics, kind of have in the back of your mind that there's almost always a reason behind why something is the way it is. Why does the equation look like that? Oh, it's because if you derive it from this equation, that's what happens. Everything kind of has a reason in physics and you can dig deep into pretty much any physical concept in order to find like the reason by why something is the way it is and it might take ages for you to get there but like when you're like boggled at like why is the answer to this question this i encourage you to not write it off as oh well that's just the answer that's just physics try to figure out like actually understand like what what is happening because that's what's going to actually prepare you for the actual exam because in the ib physics exam you can't get away with those exams just by memorizing all the answers to the past papers you actually kind of have to understand stuff and because the questions do flip flip-flop but if you do know your concepts you'll be fine okay my third tip is kind of connected to what i was just talking about and it's basically to try and see how things are connected because that's when things get interesting like mechanics is essentially the base for like doing oscillations and then thermal physics uses mechanics to like derive its equations all of those equations are basically derived just using the same sort of concepts that you learn in mechanics another sub point to what my main point is is that you should probably really like try and get your mechanics down because it's kind of considered like the basis for all of the other things that you do knowing how to derive stuff how to solve mechanics equations is going to set you up to do really well in the other one mechanics is the foundation if your mechanics is shaky then your house is all gonna fall down but yeah that's just my tip i did so so many practice problems for mechanics it's ridiculous my fourth tip is that if you feel bored or low or just you just hate physics and you're trying to get a bit of inspiration there's like a lot of amazing youtube channels that are about ib physics and i would really recommend for anyone who's just having a low time and they just like they just don't see the point of why am i studying all this physics nonsense watch some videos to like get you inspired because that's what helped me i would watch like veritasia minute physics because there's lots of like interesting stuff like about like black holes and you know there's lots of topics which can interest you watch stephen talking talk you know watch all these physicists like read these real life physicists talk and like use the key terms which you're using in your ib physics program to like act as like inspiration for you to like keep going and actually want to learn all of this stuff so you can actually understand what those smart people are talking about because that's the coolest part it's like when you learn some stuff in school and then you watch like a video and you're just like oh i get it because i've already studied this before so Okay, my fifth tip is that past papers, I'm gonna say this again and again and again, past papers are the holy grail of how to get a seven because you can know lots of fun physics facts, but if you don't know the exact 
terminology which the examiner wants in your answer, then you're not going to get high grades. Another thing to note with past papers is that they may seem incredibly scary and daunting at the start, especially physics one. When I first looked at that physics paper and it was so, 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 so long, the physics paper too, and I didn't even understand anything that it said in the first question, I was absolutely terrified. But the thing is, even though the first few questions that you try do seem ridiculously difficult, you have to like tell yourself, this will get easier over time. This will get easier as I keep doing them. Eventually it's all going to click and it'll be fine. If you're kind of scared about doing paper two, I totally understand. I would start off with paper one. It's a lot more chill, but don't think that just because it's multiple choice that it's easy. It's not easy. It's very difficult. I honestly think paper one is more difficult than paper two, but that's only because of the time constraints of paper one. Paper two is nice because you got a lot of time for that one, but the questions are really difficult. Paper one is hard because yeah the questions aren't that hard but you just don't have enough time like to finish anything you have to work super fast past papers are what is going to save you if you're not doing past papers you're not going to do well <laughs> unless you're a genius or something i don't know i did so many past papers when did i start i started maybe six months before my exam i started doing paper ones maybe like two or three months after that i started doing paper twos so early that's when you should start. If you haven't started yet, you got two weeks before your exam, you should still do past papers. <laughs> okay, tip number six is that you only need a 69% to get a seven. Keep that in mind. That doesn't mean that you can slack and just skip a bunch. No, it means that specifically in the physics papers, this is all papers, focus on the questions that you know that you can get because you know it's okay if you don't know how to do those stupid circuit problems. It's okay if you don't know what boson ion you're talking about or whatever because you only have so much time and you don't want to waste time on things that you know that you're not gonna get. What I would do is I would just go through and do all the ones that I knew I could do first, but then the ones I was really confused about, I would leave them, go do something else, and then come back to them. Okay, tip number seven. Know how to use the formula booklet. You have to know the structure of the formula booklet. The formula booklet is in order of the topics that you studied and it's in order of the topics that will come up on the exam. Another thing that I did is that because it takes time to flip through all of the pages, I ripped open the formula booklet and then laid it on the desk so that I didn't have to flip through. I could just like look and be like, aha, that one boom. So yeah, rip up the formula booklet if you're allowed and spread it out across the desk so you don't have to waste time flipping through stuff. I don't know if that's allowed. I was allowed to. Oh well. So yeah, before you go into the exam, you should know what every freaking symbol means. You should know what formulas are on there, what aren't, if there are any, and what they mean and how to use them. If you want to just chill and cruise, you can like lax on some of these tips a bit, but if you want a seven, this is what we do. This may sound like a bit of a counter example to our tip seven, but tip number eight is actually, you should also try and memorize the equations. <laughs> now, what do I mean by that exactly? I mean that when you're doing paper one, time is the asset. You don't really have time to go out and like, oh, what's the momentum equation again? All right, MB, right? Like you don't have time for that. If you have those in your head, you're just like infinitely faster. And so you don't have to rote memorize them. But what I would do is that when I was doing past papers, I'd be like, oh, okay, this is oscillations and waves. And then I would think, oh, I think it's this equation. So I'd like think about it in my head, active recall, pull it out of your brain, put it down, check the formula booklet, am I correct? Ah, I'm correct. That's cool. Ah, I'm not correct. Shit change it. And then just by doing that over time, just by like naturally practicing the active recall of the equations and then making sure I was checking if I was correct, I just eventually memorized them mostly over time. Like 9.81, you need to have that in your head. All of the other constants, those are good to have in your head. So just practice. Instead of being like, oh shit, what's the G constant? Let me just look it up on the formula booklet. That's going to take you time. Put those constants and those formula booklets in your head if you want to save time. Know the data booklet so that in case you do forget because you're having a seizure because you're under so much panic because the exam is terrifying then it's totally fine if you forget you can just check the data booklet also you may suck at oscillations and waves and you just can't memorize the equation it's nice to you know be like oh okay this is an oscillations and waves problem i have no idea what to do so let me flip over to the formula booklet part where there's oscillations and waves and i'm gonna take a look at these equations and i'm gonna think about which one is gonna help me with this problem okay tip number nine <laughs> so tip number nine is that you should either find a tutor or a teacher that can answer your problems efficiently so what i would do is that i would go through these past papers you know because past papers are the holy grail i would go through them and whenever i would get stuck and i didn't want to waste time spending ages and ages and ages trying to figure out what it was i would take a screenshot of it and then i would paste it in a notebook because i did this on my ipad 
and I would just have like a saved copy of all of the problems which I was having trouble with. And what I would do is I would either bring those to my teacher or my tutor and we would go through those and he would explain all of my confusions. This is how I would use a tutor. I wouldn't use a tutor to like teach me material because I would just like learn the material from YouTube. I would use the tutor to like answer the questions which I collected from doing past papers and just going through them one by one. Tutors are expensive and this is what I find to be like the most efficient way to use these tutors. I tutor IB physics and this is the method that I use and I feel like it's probably the most efficient. It's always nice to know that like, oh, if I'm completely lost, I can just go to my tutor and he can help me out with that. For the most part, my tutor was just my teacher, but if your teacher sucks, then it's worth, I think, investing in a tutor. If your teacher sucks, but there's another physics teacher in the school, become friends with them and like go to them to ask problems. I just think it's really important, this was really important for me, to have a dude that's on your side that you know that you can go to to ask questions about the questions. <laughs> in the exams. <laughs> okay, number 10 is that remember, in physics, there's only gonna be like four logical leaps that you need to make in paper two. In paper two, most of the questions are like worth only two to three marks. Number 10 is pay attention to how many marks each of the questions is worth because that essentially tells you like how many bits of like key bits of information you need to put. So if it's one mark, they're gonna need like a few words. If it's two or three mark, then maybe you need to put the equation and then you need to show some sort of rearranging and then you need to give the answer. And it's also good to keep in mind that like that the maximum amount of marks that each question can be is four marks. Four marks are pretty rare. Most of them are between two or three marks. The IB is kind of like feeding you to the answer. So first they might ask you to rearrange an equation, then they may ask you to plug in a number, then they may ask you to plug in a different number, show something else. But they kind of like spoon feed you the answer to the final question. And so yeah, just keeping that in mind. There's no like mind blowing physics things that you have to like invent on the spot in order to do it. If you compare them to like other exams for example my oxford physics exam 11 marks one line of text blank page it's actually not that bad when you think about it okay so just as a bonus i'm adding one more tip the line of best fit starts from the zero point and goes through all of the error bars <laughs> okay yeah that's pretty much it thanks for watching i hope this helped any of you guys who are who are studying for ib physics if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below i'm gonna be making videos about paper one paper two and paper three i think they deleted paper three so probably not that and also i'm gonna have a video about like how i study with the two and how I study with my iPad so when those are up you can find them here or like in the little dot thing over there okay yeah that's pretty much all my tips and yeah that's all we have for this video thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next one bye do past papers